It's a brand new year. It's a brand new year to tell of God's goodness. It's a brand new year to be his hands extended to other people, to tell of his salvation, his goodness, his kindness, how he saves, how he heals, how he delivers, to tell them that nothing is impossible now with our God who saved and gave his only begotten son so that they might be his own. It's a brand new year to tell of his great love. It's a brand new year to receive the promises that God has declared over our life. It's a brand new year. And as I was praying over this new year, asking God for his heart, for his people, I began to see a picture of someone in combat boots. And I saw the combat boots from different angles, like God was showing me different ways he was looking at this, these, these boots. And as I looked at these boots, I began to see a, a crown come down. And the crown was golden and it was glittering and it was filled with precious stones and it was kind of twirled slowly so I could see the beautiful stones and the, and the brightness and the shine and how it caught the light. And as I looked at this, I began too to realize that God was going to give his people revelation, his word, and this new year. So those that would wait upon him, that would listen, he would give them divine instruction. And as I looked at the boots, the scripture, the first chapter of Joshua came to mind. And the Lord is bringing his children into the promised land in Joshua, the first chapter. And he's talking to Joshua and he says this of Joshua, Joshua, anywhere your feet trod, you can have the land. Now, I want you to know the children of Israel were going in to receive the promises that God had made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to all their descendants. They were going in to possess the promises. But you've got to know this, that those combat boots that I saw was because they were going in against great and mighty armies, far greater than themselves. And God says to Joshua in Joshua 1, 9, he said, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be terrified or be dismayed for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. God wants you to know that he is with you. He is with you to receive the promises that he's made for you this year. Sometimes it seems like we've waited forever and some people wander around and wander around because they just don't believe. But God says, put your boots on, your combat boots, we're going and we're going to take and receive the promises that I have for you. Now that crown that I saw, when I looked at it, the scripture that came to mind was from the last chapter of Matthew. The last chapter of Matthew, as Jesus is getting ready to ascend into heaven, he's speaking to his disciples and he says this, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. And he says this, go and make disciples of all nations. Now, what is that authority given to us for or that he was given? Well, that authority was given to us also. We are the body of Christ, the Bible says. And he says, if we abide in him and his word abides in us, we can ask anything, ask anything. In fact, the Lord says, you ask and it will be given to you. So the Lord says, ask, and you have the authority. We have authority over principalities and powers. And what is that for? Well, it's so that people may see the goodness of God, so that they may receive the kingdom, so that they may be saved and delivered from their sins and have eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. God says, I'm going to use you powerfully in this new year. I've given you authority to take the land. I've given you authority to pass, push past principalities and powers and every roadblock that would try to hinder you from receiving the promises that I've made for you to you so that you may bring forth my kingdom here on earth. You know, I love Matthew the sixth chapter when it's when Jesus disciples ask him, you know, teach us to pray. And the Lord says, okay, our father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God wants his people to be people that believe him for great things so that his kingdom is displayed so that people may know how wonderful our God is and receive the salvation that Jesus bought for them when he died upon the cross for them. Also, as I was praying, I saw the word believe, believe, the word believe. And then I began to hear a funny song, an old Keith Green song. It was one of his funny ones and it's called, He'll Take Care of the Rest. 
Now, the one line, it says, just believe and you'll receive the comfort that you need. And then the, it talks of the two di different verses. One was about Moses and one was about Noah. And it's all about believing God and doing what he tells you to do. You're calling those things that are not as though they were. You're doing what what um, nobody else believes you should do to bring forth the kingdom of God. And it says, just look at old Noah toting his umbrella when there wasn't a cloud in the sky. All his neighbors would laugh at his pet giraffe as they all snickered as he walked by. And then he said, Noah, you keep on building that boat. It's just a matter of time before it's gonna float. You just keep doing your best and pray that it's blessed and he'll take care of the rest. Yes, God will take care of the rest. God is going to take care of the rest. He's a faithful and true God. He'll do what he said he was due. And the Lord led me to Romans, the fourth chapter. Now Romans, the fourth chapter is all about faith. It's about, it's not, a, it's not about our works, but it's all about believing God. It's about Abraham, Abraham, the father of faith, who believed God. And it, the Bible says in the fourth chapter, it was accounted to him as righteousness. He believed God. The Bible says, a father of many nations, I have made you in the sight of him who he believed, even God who raises the dead and he calls those things that are not as though they were. Uh, the Bible, Bible says this in the footnotes. It says this. He says he calls those things that are not as though they were, or he calls forth those things to bring forth the things that are not. See, God is the God that said, let there be light in Genesis, the first chapter. He spoke it and it became. Yet let there be light and there was light. He said, let there be day and night and there was day and night. He said, let there be land and there was land. He said, let there be animals and there was animals. Whatever God speaks, it comes forth. And so God calls those things that are not to nullify those things that are. are. And then it says that Abraham hoped against hope. I love what the Amplified says. It says this. He said when there was no hope, there was nothing that you could even hope in. You know what? Abraham says, you know what? I'm going to keep on hoping. He hoped against hope in order that he might become the father of many nations. You know, the Bible says he didn't consider that he his flesh was dead, he was over, that he was 100 years old. He didn't consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. But you know what? He looked at God. He looked at the promises of God. He looked at God and he considered him faithful who had called him. He considered that this God was all powerful and almighty, that he could and would bring forth those promises. And because he did, the Bible said that he was considered righteous, that through his faith, God counted it as righteousness. And you know what? He received the promises of God. Now, God wants to deliver his promises over to you in this new year. You know, there was in before the children of Israel came into the promised land in Joshua, before that, for their fathers and mothers, their forefathers wandered the wilderness for 40 years. They did not come into the promises of God. In Hebrews, the third chapter, it talks about why. It says this, they did not enter into the land of rest because of their unbelief. God says, believe me. Believe me in this new year. Believe me when you don't see what you want to see. When you have to just say, you know what? I'm not looking at what I see. There's nothing to hope in in this. But I'm looking at this God who is faithful and true. And I'm looking at his word. Your word, Lord, says this, that, that Lord, that you that you're, there's not failed one good word of all that you promised to us. And I love that. And that is at the end of Joshua. After they've taken the land, Joshua said to the children of Israel, listen, there has not failed one good word of all that God has promised us. Oh yeah. God is faithful and he's true. The Bible says his word will not return void, but it will accomplish what it sent. To. Remember this again, God is the God that calls those things that you can't see as though they were. And you know what? They, uh, they come. He calls those things that are not as though they were to nullify those things that are. He says, let there be, and it is. So you have a wonderful new year and know this, God Almighty, he loves you. He loves you. This God loves you so very much. 
God bless you. Bye-bye.